G'day, everyone. Um, what I've been looking at recently is upgrading my storage. Um, I have got a lot of storage that is available to me, but I did want to back up my RAID drives. And due to the fact that I'm doing weddings and things like that, I always like to have multiple backups. So I wanted another uh, solution, a Thunderbolt solution. Now, OWC announced this around about two months ago, and it took a while to actually ship. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit about this. Now, I bought this out of my own money. Um, so this is not a sponsored video or anything like that. Uh, but there's a reason why I wanted to buy this. Now, there's some other things that I'll discuss as well. Uh, if you're after pure performance uh, in drives, this may not be the way to go. But uh, I'm not after that. I'm just after a backup type of solution. So what I'll do is I'll just show you uh, what the unit is. So this is the unit that I uh, bought. It's called the OTB um, Mini Stack. It's from OWC. And you can see this, see the price there that the actual unit is. But this is quite unique in some of the things that it will do because it fits the perfect size for a Mac Mini. Now, I'm not actually using this on the Mac Mini. I'm using it on my MacBook Pro, the new 14-inch model that I've got. Um, but this would be a great solution too if you uh, want to put it underneath a Mac Mini because it's the exact same size. So the form factor w is terrific. Uh, I'll just take you through a couple of these images. Let me just enlarge this up. So it's a very simple unit in the way that you operate it. There's just two lights that you can see here to show that it's working. Um, let me go the opposite way. You can see here that it shows it underneath the Mac Mini if you're looking there. So it gives you the, an idea about what this will look like. Um, again, that's a close-up of it, so you can sort of see there. Now, the inside of this is what makes this so good because you can actually sit uh, two things into this. You can actually put a um, SSD drive, which is an NVMe drive, uh, and you can also stick either an SSD in here or a normal um, hard drive as well, a platter hard drive. So you've got the option of putting both of these. Now I'm going to show you how I install them because I did buy both of these uh, drives to stick in there. Now it has four Thunderbolt 4 ports that are, are here. Now this one on this side is how you connect that to your computer and you've also got a power adapter that you will um, plug into there. This is if you want to put a safety lock on uh, as well. Now, just to sort of give you a bit of information about this too, it is a Thunderbolt 4, but it's USB-C uh, compatible, so you can use both if you want to use that. Um, it also talks down here that it will charge. It's got 60 watts of notebook charging power over Thunderbolt or USB-C, so that's great if you wanted to keep your notebook charged up as well. Now, this is one of the only downsides that I've found with this unit is even if you put an NVMe drive in there, the maximum performance you get is only 770 megabits per second. And I'll show this working so you'll get an idea about how this actually performs. But so if you do want this for really fast performance, although there's nothing wrong with 770 megabytes per second, um, but if you are after really fast um, drives and things like that, this is obviously not the solution for you. It does also come with a Thunderbolt cable as well, which is nice because a lot of these units that you buy don't come with Thunderbolt cables. It is also whisper quiet uh, too. So I've noticed that, that there is a fan internal on this, but it is super quiet. So there's no noise at all. Now it just says here that it has a universal SATA HD D and SSD bay. Like I said, so you can plug both of those drive formats in there. And it has an NVMe M.2 PCIe SSD slot as well. And I'll show you these being put in there. Uh, so that's great. So you have got that ability there as well. Now you can, if you want to, um, with the OWC soft RAID utility, you can actually run this as a RAID as well. So if you put two similar drives in uh, spec-wise, you could actually run it that way. So that's quite good too. So if you wanted to run it uh, on RAID, uh, that's possible too. Uh, it will work on Mac and Windows as well. Now, just a, a little bit about the specifications here. You'll see that the device ports uh, will go up to 40 gigabits uh, a second. So, you know, they're very, very fast. And you can daisy chain this as well. So you could run multiple devices off this uh, if they were Thunderbolt as well. So, you know, that's a really good um, thing to have on this. Uh, there is a cooling fan, like I've said. Uh, and also, uh, if you want to have a look at what OS compatibility, I'll leave the link down below so you can check uh, what OS this will work with. Also, there's no drivers required uh, on the Mac side. I'm not sure about the PC side, but there certainly wasn't on the Mac uh, side as well. So what we'll do now is I'll open up um, the case and I'll show you installing the hard drives into it. So this just gives you a look at the front. You can see the OWC sign. Um, if you look on the back there, the four Thunderbolt ports that you connect to the computer. Uh, and then if we look on the back, you just have to undo these screws to get into the unit itself. Now you'll see when I open it up, 
uh, that you've got to also take the power adapter out of the board and also a clip that you can see that I've undone there as well. Now, the uh, MVME drive I got was this crucial one. Now, it's only a one terabyte drive, and it's actually only rated at 1,000 gigabits per second. Now, that's because the unit itself is only rated for 700-odd uh, in the unit, so there was no point getting a faster MVME drive. Now the hard drive that I've got is a Seagate. It's an eight terabyte drive that matches my RAID that I'm using to store everything on so I can back everything up. Uh, it's only a 5,200 RPM drive, but that's not an issue because uh, I don't need it to be that fast. Now, if you look here on the inside, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach the NVMe drive first. Uh, and what you do is you just undo this little screw that you see on the right hand side here. And then you grab the um, actual SSD and you sort of tilt it up and then push it in and then push it down and then just do the screw up. Just make sure when you do that screw up you don't do it too tight though because it could damage the uh, motherboard that's there. Now the drive itself just sort of slots in between these slots and you just push it in and then it clips into the section there that you just saw. All you have to do then is just use the screw holes to tighten it down so it won't move later on and then you, there's also two at the back that you put in as well and that's as simple as it is. Okay, So let's try and see what performance we get out of these drives. Um, so I'm going to select them. You just I'm using Blackmagic uh, Disk Speed Test here. If I go select Drive, Target Drive. Now over here, uh, these are my drives that I've actually got on here. So I'll test the NVMe drive first. So I'll click onto that and then say Open. Now that will open that up. Now if I do a speed test on this now, we'll see how it goes. So you can see here it's up to 652. I'll do this a couple of times because sometimes uh, they sort of average over a period of time. Um, so I'll give it two goes just to see what it reads. So the right there is 656 and the uh, read is 783. I'll do it again just to see if it's roughly about the same. Yep, so it's roughly about the same. And the read's roughly the same there too, around 780. Now this uh, chart here gives you an idea about if you're working with this, what type of uh, results could you work with? So it's pretty good. I mean, you're only sort of dealing here that you couldn't work with this 10-bit um, YUV422. Apart from that, you could work with everything, uh, even down to 2160p, uh, 60, uh, 60p, sorry, in ProRes 422 and camera DNG RAW. So it's fairly good. Um, now, what we'll do is we'll try the internal drive. Now, remember, this is only a um, slow... Uh, backup drive. So speed really is not important in this. Uh, so I'll, I'll just sort of stop this and then we'll test that drive and we'll do a speed test on this. Um, I expected this to sort of round about be, you know, 180, 200 uh, and that's what it seems to be reading. So it's 164, 165. Uh, so we'll see what the read speed of this is as well. Uh, 140, 50. Uh, so it's about 160 odd as well, around 160 at peak there of 156. Um, and that's, like I said, that's ample. I, I don't need a fast drive to run Carbon Copy Cloner. I'm only dragging the drive over. After it's done the initial backup, then it's only replacing files that are there. So I was quite comfortable with buying a um, 5,200 RPM drive. So overall, I'm really happy with how the drive works. Uh, like I said, I wasn't after a real performance drive here because I have other drives that I'll talk about in another video uh, for my um, editing in video and things like that. This drive really, for me, is only as a spare drive uh, for backing up my RAID system that I have, which is an eight terabyte system, and also to give me a small one terabyte NVMe drive on there as well that I can just use for certain things as well. Um, I love the fact that it is um, Thunderbolt 4 and I can daisy chain off that if I need to add more devices later on. And obviously, if you have a Mac Mini, this is even better uh, because it will fit that perfect size underneath. But overall, I'm really happy with it. If you have any questions, um, leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I will leave the link where you can get this, but like I said, uh, I bought this with my own money, so there's no affiliate money or anything like that uh, involved here. And apart from that, everyone, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.